Hi America. I would like to make an announcement. It seems as though Beetlejuice 2 is going to be produced with Winona Ryder and Michael Keaton reprising their roles as Lydia Dietz and Beetlejuice respectively. In tandem with the filming and production of Beetlejuice 2, I will be writing dialogue and characters into the Tim Burton script. The characters that I write in the script exist in the same archetypal realm that the characters in the Tim Burton script exist in. Tim Burton will soon find out that the fiction that he is creating crosses over into a sort of quasi-reality that is just as real as the reality of the tangible world that we experience as reality or perceive to be reality. When he is filming scenes from Beetlejuice 2, it is possible for characters that I have written to cross over from the archetypal realm that I, that my characters inhabit to the archetypal realm that his characters inhabit and complete and compete with them for things. So when suddenly in my Beetlejuice 2 script, a new character emerges that Tim Burton didn't write, he should now know that this character was written by me and has crossed over into his movie, having become a part of it. Uh, what I um, am presenting is a complete version of Beetlejuice 2. When the movie comes out, you will need to see my presentation of Beetlejuice 2 to get the whole movie. I'm going to write a character for myself. For Tim Burton to consider, let's start the opening scene of the Be My Beetlejuice 2 script. Scene 1. Lydia Dietz, now a college professor at the Petaluma College of Fine Arts in Petaluma, California, enters her class on a Monday morning to greet her students. She teaches a class about paranormal phenomenon. Good morning, class. Today, we will be discussing ghosts. For starters, have any of you ever seen a ghost? A woman named Sheila responds. I don't believe in ghosts. Really? You'll be a believer by the end of this course. I doubt it. Do you believe in the afterlife? I believe that the human soul does exist in non-corporal form, but only exists in another plane of existence that we don't have access to. They have access to us. I've been haunted by ghosts of my former residence. Really? Can you name any of them? I sure can, Sheila. There's a ghost that has been haunting me for years. His name is Beetlejuice. He could be summoned by saying his name three times. I don't believe you. If that's true, let me just try saying his name three times. Sheila says, says Beetlejuice's name three times. And not only does Beetlejuice appear, but also Beetlejuice's brother, Mike. Hi, class, I'm Beetlejuice. I am Mike. I'm Beetlejuice's brother. Beetlejuice has a brother. His name is Mike. That's not very creepy. It's not a very creepy name for a ghost. I can be creepy if you want me to. My nickname is Graveyard Bones. Is that creepy enough for you? That's creepy. Thanks. Can you tell me what it's like to live on as a ghost? Mike? For starters, it's never boring. As ghosts, we live in a realm of gothic beauty that we can cross over from into your realm of existence. Why do you haunt people?
We haunt people because sometimes we feel empty. Sheila? We yearn to interact with human uh, beings in the world of concrete reality. The spirit world is a state of limbo that we inhabit until we re-enter a new world of tangible reality. This realm that we inhabit is a place. Oh. Okay, where's the, uh, where's the... That we pass through. Do you like to scare people? We love to scare people, Sheila. Seeing a ghost is kind of experience that excites the human psyche at a primal level, where survival instincts are activated. When a person is in a state of terror, that is when the person feels truly alive, as the privilege of being alive is felt. It's not a true state of terror to see a ghost. It is slightly terrifying, but a fun glimpse into the eternal and unknown. That's fascinating. Let's enjoy the class, Sheila. That would be excellent. Lydia Dietz lectured the students. They then went home the next day, they reassembled in Miss Dietz's classroom for another lecture again. Mike appeared uh, to them during the lecture. Hi, Lydia. You're here again? I was so moved by your lecture yesterday that uh, I decided to come back today. It is wonderful for a teacher of the supernatural to have a real ghost in the classroom. Can you come back tomorrow? I was hoping we went on a date. You are a ghost. You have that glow that surrounds you. It's a beautiful aura. It's a sign of being a person who has gained immortality. The idea is interesting. It's... Just that I've never dated a human, I've never seen a human being dating a ghost. Let's set a new precedent. I'll have to think about it. I'll be waiting. Lydia Dees lectures her class about supernatural beings who can suddenly appear in different moments of the past, present, and future in the form of an inanimate object. She then goes home for the evening. She lives in a beach house that she built from a with a bunch of friends that sits along the Pacific Ocean in a town called Happy Sunset, California, she sits on the corner on the couch uh, to watch some lame television. When she gets a knock on the door, is a guy uh, she has been dating named Casper Schopenhauer. I didn't know you were coming over tonight, Casper. I thought I'd drop in. I don't like your abruptness, Casper. You should have called. What are you watching? Reruns of Fantasy Island. I'll watch that with you. Suddenly, they hear a sinister sounding voice in the living room speaking to them. You cannot escape from me. I am your true love. What was that? I'm not sure. Lydia suspects that it might be Mike who has come to haunt them. Suddenly, the house starts rumbling as if there was an earthquake. But it is Mike using his telekinetic powers. Lydia, you must come with me. I'm going home, Lydia. 
This is really freaking me out. Lydia Dietz goes to the class the next day to find Mike there again. Good morning, Lydia. Good morning, Mike. Where were you yesterday evening? At home. Gardening. Gardening at night. Who gardens at night? A lot of people garden at night. So many people, in fact, that R.E.M. wrote a song about it called Gardening at Night. That's a lie. You were terrorizing me and Casper because you were jealous. That's a douchebag's name, Casper. <laughs> you should be with a real ghost like me. I'm Graveyard Bones. Not Casper the Friendly Ghost. Get out of here. I want you, Lydia. Go home. Bye, I'll see you. Lydia Dietz goes home that evening to find herself feeling very isolated and lonely. She starts to think that she may be falling in love with Mike. She goes to bed. She's lying in bed, feeling an ominous presence in the room. This presence is both somewhat terrifying and beautifully enticing as it beckons her to a transcendent realm of color she has never... I think it's in the other notebook. Is this a pocket? What the f***? Okay, I get it, but it's in the, the rest of it is in the other notebook. Okay. Oh, Beetlejuice 2 can do. Oh, okay. So I do like this script that I wrote for Beetlejuice 2. Okay, uh, let's see. Wait, we're, okay. Where are you? Where is this? I'm just trying to find out where this. And emotions she has never felt. She reaches a precipice in the heightened state of awareness where she crosses over. She has the option of crossing over into the realm of unearthly pleasure or staying earthbound in familiar territory. She finds the courage within herself to cross over to the realm of experience uh, and experiences the sensations of the most exquisite kind in a place of beauty and tranquility. It is a place where she understands the true meaning of the love of existence. She has found herself in a place of transcendence. It is a place of unusual sights. The next morning, when she gets out of bed, Mike is standing there in a room. How'd you like it? Mike? That was amazing. If you decide to go with me... That is the kind of love I can give you.
I have to get to school. I'll talk to you about this later. Lydia arrives at school the next day and goes into her class. She addresses her students. Good morning, class. We have discussed many different supernatural phenomena so far this semester. Does anybody care to give us their opinion on the validity of my philosophy of the supernatural? I would. Yes, Sheila, what is your opinion? I don't believe any of it. A skeptic. Why don't you believe? The human mind is an epiphenomenon that arises from the functioning of the brain. My theory, Sheila, is that the brain is brought into life by the human mind. Which is eternal. I've never seen any proof of that. You've seen Mike, the ghost known as Graveyard Bones. That could have easily been an optical illusion. That wasn't an optical illusion. That was a ghost. Ghosts don't exist, Miss Dietz. They do exist. I remain skeptical. This is merely a material plane of existence. What could possibly remain in the human body after death? The soul. Did you ever notice that there is something indescribable, something so unique about each person that you have ever met? It is that defining characteristic in each of us that distinguishes us from each other. It is that which sets us apart from each other. Yes, I know about that. That is the soul. If the soul didn't exist, how could you explain the, the amazing variety of human personalities? I don't believe in the soul. This is what we have. The material world of fleeting temporal existence. What is fleeting and temporal is the tangible world that we inhabit. The soul is eternal. The soul lives on forever in new manifestations and in new surroundings that are brought into existence by the soul. There are conditions for immortality. To get immortality, you must believe in the immortal soul. You must look at this world in an optimistic fashion as an idealist who believes in meaning and purpose. You must believe that life is meant to be a beautiful experience of unearthly pleasure devoid of suffering. You must find the person who, who you are destined to form a unity of souls with. The love that you have for this person is not only a love that is sublime, a sublime pleasure, but both physically and both physically and emotionally, but it is the creative force that brings harmony in into the universe and gives meaning and purpose to life. That was brilliant, Mr. Uh, Deeds. We'll see if it's true. Remember, Sheila. You must truly believe you wanted your soul to be immortal. I'll remember that, Miss Dietz. I must truly believe. Have a nice afternoon, class. Miss Dietz leaves the school and sees Casper Schopenhauer in front of it. What have you been up to, Lydia? The same stuff. The same stuff. What's that ecoplasm that I'm finding on your clothes? It's not ecoplasm, or ectoplasm. That's not ectoplasm. It's a beauty product that I have been using for my skin. Bullshit, Lydia! It's ectoplasm. You have been dating ghosts.
Okay, so it is ectoplasm. But we're not dating. I'll be watching you very closely, Lydia. Fuck off, Casper. I don't need somebody like you who is so needy and insecure about a relationship. I'll see you later, Lydia. You better not be cheating. Casper goes home. Lydia goes home to ponder the situation. She begins to think that Casper is not the guy for her. He is too jealous of her, the slightest indication that she could be cheating at her. She knows that... For her to get her immortality, she must be with the person she was destined for. Lydia goes to school the next day. She gives her lecture about the human soul leaving the body and inhabiting inanimate objects. In such cases, the human body functions on a... Uh, material level. Good morning, class. Today we'll be talking about the phenomenon of the human soul leaving the body and inhabiting a, an inanimate object. Come again, Miss Deeds. No, Sheila, it's a bona fide fact. Uh, I, in some cases, the human soul has been seen to leave the body and inhabit inanimate objects. So what you were saying is that my human soul could leave my body and find itself in an inanimate object. Yes, Sheila, that is exactly what I'm saying. I don't believe this. Except in Ms. Dietz, we are merely machines with brains as human beings. The human mind is an epiphenomenon of the brain. You are wrong. Where do you think you get your passion for debate in your personality, Sheila? It's a function of my brain. The mind is, not, um, is material. No, that is not correct. The human brain and the human body are machines through which the soul temporarily operates until it finds a new place. Uh, the body and brain can function without a soul, but it operates on a different level. In such cases, uh, much like a robot. I would like to believe what you're saying. Um, Miss Dietz, but it just seems, doesn't seem logical. My purpose here, in part, is to try to convince you of my theories. Please keep an open mind. Okay, sure. I'll see you people tomorrow. Have a great day.